Uh, Correct was an independent label that I worked at years ago in like 1996, um, and um, I was already in the group Jurassic Five. Um, this was when J5 wasn't paying the bills and everybody had a day job. Mark was working at a hospital and Tuna was a security guard. And, Soup was working at Loud, Death Row, <laughs> everywhere else uh, on the planet. And we, you know, we were just all, you know, hustling, trying to get our money on it and, and still enjoy making music together. Uh, Correct was a sm very small label that was, uh, it was an independent label. And uh, we signed um, Al Tariq from the Beat Nuts and um, a group called Manish and uh, um, Grav, who um, in turn worked with Kanye West, which was... Um, Kanye, as we all know, has blown up to uh, the nth degree and is just, you know, doing big things these days. But it was a really interesting time because um, I just got off the phone actually with Grav just about five minutes ago. And he was saying that you realize that at that time, you know, in that small little vacuum of time that it was Jurassic Five, uh, Beat Nuts, um, Kanye West and David Banner. At that time, David Banner was in a group called Crooked Letters. And um, so, yeah, it's like, you know, it's just funny how small the, the, the world is, but the record business is even smaller. And so I didn't even realize that David Banner was even in Crooked Letters at the time. I remember that it was a group that uh, Ian Hunt at the time was brought to the label. And um, so it's just funny, you know, you know, and I, I wanted to sign Kanye. You know, I was like, you know, I think this cat can do some things and it didn't happen. You know, it didn't happen. It couldn't happen for, you know, powers that be. But, you know. Uh, it would have been interesting to see what would have happened if he would have signed it correct and, and you know, just to see what happened, you know. I, I think it's better that it went the way it did for Kanye because, you know, he had more of an engine behind him, you know, he had a bigger label, you know, status behind him and he needed it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a trip. It's a trip to see uh, all the talent that was underneath that one roof. Actually, I saw Kanye about a, um, a year ago at um, uh, a show in L.A. that I believe we were playing with D'Angelo. And I saw him there and we talked briefly, but um, yeah, I mean, I, th I think a lot of people can say a lot about Kanye, but um, my experience with him is he hasn't changed. He's always been like, he, you know, he knows what he wants and he goes and he gets it, you know, call it cocky, call it whatever you want. But, you know, as a musician, you got to have some of that with you. I mean, you, I mean, you got to believe in yourself. You got to believe in your craft and you got to have your eye on the target and know where you're going. And he's always had that. He's always had a very clear vision of what he wants something to sound like. And that's extremely important as a producer because you got your your whole goal is to guide the artist, guide the vocalist. You know, anybody can make beats, but to be a producer like Quincy Jones, you know, and like dictate what the landscape's gonna look like, it's important. And I think he, he does a, Kanye does an exceptional job of that.